Chapter 3. The Biggest Snake Easy. If he couldn't answer this question, he didn't deserve to be here. Here, Russell prompted, snatching the ANCAM from Dev. He fumbled with the new device and got to the alphabet screen. A-M-A-Z-O-N space R-I-V-E-R. He typed with super speed thumbs. He'd have to tell his mom that all those video games were good for something after all. The screen lit up with a picture of leaves that spelled correct. Next, the screen read, your next clue. I got it, I got it, Russell called in a hushed voice. He could see kids from other teams glance over at him. Sage, Mari, and Dev pulled in tight to look at his screen. What has feet like a duck, the body of a beaver, and the head of a hairy hippo? Warning. At least half the animal has to be out of the water in your photo. What? This one was not easy. Russell realized the first question about the Amazon had been a freebie. Now the race had really begun. I know it, Mari said quietly. Let's get down to the closest stream. What is it? Sage demanded, but Mari had already headed down a narrow path at a steady jog. Russell handed the ANCAM back to Dev. Then he fell in line after Mari and Sage thinking they were one step ahead of the rest of the teams. But soon, the other kids started darting past them. Russell noticed blue jerseys veering from the path to pass other teams. Why was Mari moving so slowly? Can we move faster, he urged, wanting to be the first to the stream. They had already lost the lead he had earned them with his fast finger work on the ANCAM. Mari, Sage prompted. Steady, the other girl replied, her long braid swaying gracefully with her even pace. From up ahead came the sound of eager splashes in the water, then the thrust of canoes sliding into the stream. Russell glanced at Dev and rolled his eyes. If Mari knew the answer to the clue, why was she holding them back? Russell was starting to wonder if she knew it after all. When the red team came to the muddy bank, the other teams were already 30 feet downstream, laughing and yelling at one another. Russell could see Damien slap his paddle on the murky water. Mari sat down on a smooth rock and eased off her running shoes. What are you doing? Russell demanded. Shh, I'm putting on my rubber boots, said Mari. Sage is right. There's nothing worse than soggy feet. But they're getting way ahead, Russell pointed out. Dev did not say anything, but he stood next to Russell, his hands on his hips. Sage busied herself readying a canoe. Mari slipped on one boot. They're also scaring away all the light wildlife. They'll never get a picture of a capybara if there aren't any capybaras to be found. Mari pulled on the other boot, stood up, and grabbed a paddle. The capybara! Russell had read about it, but he never would have figured out the clue that quickly. We can go now, Mari said, and maybe we should consider heading upstream away from the other teams. We can approach more quietly. Yeah, Dev said, endorsing Mari's tactic. Then we have a better shot at getting our shot. Russell allowed himself a second to smile at Dev's joke. When they moved toward the canoes, they realized Javier, whom they had met the day before, was there leaning against a paddle. So we meet again, Team Red. I'll be your chaperone. Russell was happy to see Javier. In the wildlife, all the teams had a guide, but the guide was only there for safety and had to and to reinforce the rules of the game. The contestants could not rely on the guide for hints or directions. Still, it helped to have someone cool tagging along, and Russell definitely thought Javier was cool. Then they were off, the bows of the boats gliding through the murky green water. Sage had taken the front end of the canoe that Javier had climbed into. Mari was the middle. That had left the other canoe for Dev and Russell. Russell sat in the back because he thought he'd be stronger at paddling. Dev was tall but lanky. The team was silent for a long time. Trees and plants grew to the very edges of the banks. Everything was oversized. Palm fronds as big as kayaks, lily pads the size of kiddie pools. It seemed quiet, but Russell knew that there was life at every level of the trees and in the stream. Do you think there are piranhas under our boat? He wondered out loud. Probably, Sage answered quickly. Then everyone went quiet again. We must be close, Mari announced. There are footprints in the mud. Russell followed her gaze. They are such unusual rodents. They have webbed feet. Mari smiled and shook her head. When they went around a bend, Dev leaned forward. Whoa, is that it? He whispered rather loudly. They all looked to where he pointed. There stood an animal the size of a large pig. 
Its reddish brown hair looked like brush bristles, and its nose was dark and wide. It's huge. It's the largest rodent in the world, Mari said. Russell noticed something moving on the ground behind it, a snake. Quick, get the shot before that snake scares it into the water. Just as Dev pulled out his hand cam, Russell heard a loud splash behind them. Hey, that must be it, Damien yelled as a team green canoe sliced through the water and knocked the side of Dev and Russell's boat. I got it, cried Gabe from the green team's other canoe. He shook his hand cam in the air. Russell's gaze lingered on Dev, who had fallen to the floor of the canoe. Just as Russell glanced back to the side of the stream, the capybara slipped under the water's surface. He gritted his teeth. Nice, Dallas called out. The green team was cheering and slapping high fives. Send it to Bull Gordon, now! When he said the last word, Dallas looked Russell in the eye. A second later, the four boys and their guide were off down the stream. Seriously, Sage said they stole our shot. My picture's all blurry, Dev confessed. I took it right when they slammed into us. His eyes narrowed. Even though Dallas was his friend, Russell thought it was a slimy move. Let's just wait here, he said. The capybara's got to come up sooner or later. They can hold their breath for five minutes, Mari said. They had been waiting for a minute or two when they saw something move on the nearby bank again. It's just the snake, Dev said. That's not just any snake, Mari noted. It's an anaconda, the largest snake in the world. An anaconda can eat something up to half its weight. It'd eat a capybara. They aren't picky. But the anaconda was not headed in the direction of the giant rodent. It was swimming toward the canoes. That guy is big, he said. If it can eat something half its weight, it could probably eat us, Sage finished. Creature feature, capybara. Scientific name, Hydrochorus hydrochirus. Type, mammal. Range, Brazil, Colombia, Uruguay, Venezuela, and parts of Argentina. Food, mostly grass and water plants, occasionally fruit, grains, and bark. The capybara's body is made for its semi-aquatic lifestyle. It spends half its time in the water. Its webbed feet are like small flippers, making, a, making the rodent a better swimmer. But the capybara also has distinct toes, four on each front foot, three on the back. The toes help it move around well on land, too. Because its eyes, ears, and nose are near the top of its head, the capybara can breathe, see, and smell while it is floating, nearly hidden in the water, just like a hippo.